Hi everyone, I'm Peggy Chi from UC Berkeley. This project is done during my summer internship at Google Research last year, working with Yang Li. Mobile and wearable computing devices are flourishing. Smartphones have become an all-purpose device for everyday activities. Smartwatches provide glanceable information and instant access to a set of frequent tasks. Smart eyewears and emerging head-mounted displays enable users to navigate private content and receive prompt assistance in their peripheral vision. Each of these devices offers a distinct form factor serving different purposes. To allow users to fully leverage a multi-device ecosystem, commercial products have begun to support basic cross-device interactions such as navigating media content on a TV with a phone, or continuing a task moving from a phone to a laptop. In recent years, researchers have proposed novel cross-device interactions, such as content sharing based on the distance and orientation among multiple users. Last year at Kai, Duet demonstrates a variety of interactions by fusing sensing inputs across a watch and a phone, such as enabling a tool palette and cross-device pinch gestures. While these cross-device interactions are novel, programming across multiple devices remains challenging. Here is a common structure of enabling interaction among the phone and a wearable. So each device runs a specific application which manages the individual UI elements, content, and user interaction. So to synchronize the data in between, developers have to define the data format that communicates over the data layer. Taking care of this kind of low-level details distracts developers from designing target interaction. We wonder, what if we can enable a service on top of these layers? How can we really enable developers to prototype ideas and easily adapt to the, the concepts to a new device combinations at runtime? In this paper, we propose Weave, a framework that allows developers to easily create cross-device wearable interactions by scripting. Weave follows an object-oriented, event-driven paradigm. Similar to how UI libraries manipulate HTML objects interactively, for example, here the code snippet on the left changes the HTML content and listens to an on-click event to hide the object. So using Weave, Developers can select one or more available devices, apply the content, and attach one or more event callbacks, such as here, a shake event to play some music back to the user in this snippet. Weave provides a set of high-level abstractions regarding the device's capabilities and affordances. Devices that have a display, for example, is abstractly described as showable. Each may have different attributes, such as low privacy or high glanceability. Devices may have various sensing and communication capabilities, such as shakeable with the accelerometer sensor and phoneable, which can make phone calls. So here, using our web-based authoring UI, developers can author interaction scripts and test them based on a set of simulated wearable devices. In addition, we provides a runtime environment that deploys the scripts in users' ad hoc network and easily adapt the, to specific device configurations. In addition, Weave's API supports coordinating cross-device behaviors, such as to enable several interaction modes, to trigger a native app, to combine the sensing events across devices, and to trigger the same actions to all the devices. So previous work has proposed several toolkits for creating cross-device interactions. Panorama introduced mechanisms for automatically distributing a web UI across multiple displays based on uh, the specific preferences of each UI element and the string sizes. XD Studio provided a GUI builder for visually authoring a distributed UI. And this year at Kai, Watch Connect shows a toolkit for prototyping watch-centric cross-device applications. 
these systems provide tool supports for distributing UI content or enabling novel manipulations. But to really fully create cross-device interactions, we've specifically aimed to include the device sensing inputs. Our system handles and coordinates the input events across devices that build on top of the current existing device framework. Here, the Weave server manages the developer's scripts and a set of available devices in the network. Based on the device profiles that describe the abstract capabilities, our server distributes the content, listens to any event device, uh, any device event, and manages the interaction flow at runtime. We've used this server client infrastructure when prototyping the interactions, but for the final deployment, an EHA network can be possibly established. So now let's look, uh, consider how a developer will program a cross-device interaction. With a set of available devices, she might first select the target devices from the set. And then she might provide some UI feedback on these devices and to handle any event callback. And then finally, to respond to users' comments. So based on this kind of workflow, we designed the free Weave framework. First, we introduced the device selection. It is challenging for developers to cover various types of devices and their combinations that might occur at runtime. A framework should enable flexible selections based on their high-level input and output resources. With Weave, a developer selects target devices using this select clause. So for example, to find a device that can be seen by others, the developer can specify the device to have a display which is showable and its privacy level to be low with an average screen size. A smartphone in this case will match this criteria. Another example is to select a device that is glanceable with a small screen size and can detect the rotation and which will match a, a smartwatch. Similarly, we can find a device that can make phone calls privately and detect some te uh, touch gestures, such as in smart eyewear. Developers can also select all the devices by the device type or by the joint where the users will um, hold the device or to exclude some devices. After selecting the devices next, our API supports output actions to those devices. To display UI content for the user, developers can show a message either in string or they can specify the content in HTML and deploy the, uh, using the show operator and then modify the content. So here shows the result, how the developers defines two UI elements in HTML using our authoring UI. She then, mo she then moves back to the script and then deploy the um, service and then test with the emulators. So Weave provides more output actions beyond visual content, including making phone calls, playing a media file, or invoking native apps. Here, for example, the remote control triggers an application on the phone. So, um, however, this involves a user tap event on this smartwatch. Therefore, well, um, the Weave uh, framework provides an on method to handle the input events from the devices. Weave provides the building events, including common touch gestures, such as tap and swipe, and the activities inferred from motion sensors in the device, such as shake, or rotate, or listen. So back to our previous remote control example. The code has two parts to show the list of options on the smartwatch and to trigger an application with the tap event. So, so far we've seen how our framework handles the event, uh, the input event from individual devices and outputs the actions to specific devices. But coordinating the behaviors of multiple devices can be challenging. Some interaction design might require all the devices to behave in the same way while some might encapsulate resources as one virtual device. Therefore, we introduced two additional ways to manipulate the devices. 
With the old mode, actions will be broadcasted, such as showing a message on every device. And for the input, a callback function will only be invoked when all the devices in the selected set trigger the same event around the same time, which can be defined by the developers. So one application is to enable the bump service. When users shake all the devices around the same time, the system will trigger the callback function. In addition, the combine operator combines the input and output resources of multiple, user, uh, multiple devices into one virtual device. So each device in this case will perform a different part of the compound behavior. This slideshow control example distributes one UI to devices. Similar to previous work Panorama, our framework distributes the content based on the screen sizes. And this shows that by just adding some few more lines of code, a new interaction mode of navigating on a glass by the swipe gestures can be added upon the previous script. Finally, Another example is the cross-device pinch gesture suggested by the paper duet. Our system handles the events from devices and triggers the callback function, such as zooming or copying an image when uh, one device detects the swipe left and another, the other detects the swipe right. So to evaluate our framework, we conducted a user study with 12 participants who had moderate web programming experience. Participants were asked to do, go through a tutorial to program a single device launchpad using Weave with three different devices one by one. We then asked them to perform three different tasks. Each used different techniques of the framework. They had to script, de deploy, and test with our, our real devices. So here's the result. On average, participants were able to script the interactions in a short amount of time using our framework. Note that to create these applications from scratch using the existing SDKs such as Android, it might take several hours to program applications on each device and then handle the data connection. One participant explained, it was fast, easy to learn, and provided a way to unify cross platform devices with the same code. Another said, it was surprisingly easy to deploy the apps. In terms of the numbers of lines of code in their script, excluding the HTML and code comments, each task required a relatively concise script. We found that participants retained their web programming styles when scripting using Weave. One participant explained, the CSS-like selection with Weave was pretty intuitive and made device selection very manageable. Another said, it significantly shortens the time required to prototype new ideas on wearable devices. Our current system tries to lower the floor of programming cross-device interactions. In the future, we'd like to encourage to raise the ceiling to help programmers to easily prototype novel interactions. And currently, our framework does not support relative spatial relations between devices as the previous paper suggested. We would like to enable that, as well as programming by, uh, by demonstration in a multi-user environment. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention. Hi there, I'm Richard Davis from Singapore Management University, and thank you, it was really interesting. I, uh, forgive me, I may have missed this, but how do you determine which devices are being looked at at one time? Because um, uh, like the bump, for example, you had all, a bunch of people and they were all using different devices. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're saying all. How do you determine what all is? Yeah, so currently our framework um, detects all the available devices. So we actually have a proxy running on a device. So if it's connected to a server, then we will count it as one available resource. So if everyone is holding a device and like do this, then the system will deploy to all the devices to, on a proxy and then react to it. So maybe one example is like in a classroom, maybe all the students can 
just open their app and then do that. But yeah, but currently we do not really like consider the multi-user um, handling. So, but that would be one interesting topic to explore. Okay, so if you're thinking about ad hoc networks, I suppose you're thinking about you know Bluetooth, everyone connects, or something like that. Yeah, so um, that would be one great future work because currently, we, if going everything is going through a server, then uh, we will probably handle other things. But yeah, that's one future topic, but not really focus uh, our focus currently. All right, thank you. Thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna fill in, right? You guys have more questions. So. Um, one, so I have two questions, basically. Just one, I mean, um, the examples that you showed was pretty easy to, de they were all devices quite different. But let's say I have three smartphones, um, they have all the same criteria. Mm -hmm. How can I select, can I select them by ID or how does it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, currently our firmware does provide the, um, provide the ID method or you can specifically use the names. Um, but otherwise, if you just select by type, which is like CSS, you just by the type, then um, we'll randomly pick one if you don't use the all method. So, um, but that's one good thing that um, we should provide. That. Um, let me quickly go back to that slide. But, oops, yeah. So currently, um, with that default, it will just pick one available device to do that. But develop developers can definitely uh, specify more on their own. Are there any more questions? So um, one more, how, um, like could I use this in class, like let's say I'm running an interaction design class and I would like to, my students to prototype with this, this is really a cool system, um, is this available? So I guess you are asking um, if it's open source. Currently it's available internally at Google, but we're really looking forward to, the, to push it to open source, not, to, not only for developers to play around with that, but maybe have a whole community to enhance the framework, to add more features and add more methods, that would be great. Thank you. Hey, it's Jeff uh, from Google, which just makes Hi. it silly, Google asking a Google <laughs> question. But, um, so I am curious a little bit about the performance issues though, like when you showed the zoom, right, it was kind of right. clanky. Um, mm. Can you comment on how you might improve that? Right, so currently our framework, um, so let me quickly go back to that um, slide. So currently, as you can see, all the proxy, when they detect, for example, the swipe in that example, it will go back to the server, and the server will decide um, to, to look into the script and then go back to trigger the action. So definitely speed is one issue. So um, currently, um, we are not really handling that performance issue, so, um, but it would be great if, for example, if it's ad hoc, and then devices can just talk internally, then probably that would be much better. But I mean, I guess you could also pass the, you could try to do it more continuously than that, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, okay. that, that's really true. So that'd be great if <laughs> we can solve that. It's not a PhD. <laughs> do I have time for another? Yeah, sure. Uh, you, didn't, you didn't talk a whole lot about the data synchronization between these parts. Um, there is some data synchronization going on, right? Um, I'm curious to know, um, you know, how, I, mean, I want to know how you do it. I mean, you're not using operational transformations, I would assume, so you're just locking things in. Or yeah, so currently everything is like the server will re maintain the state. Yeah, okay, so, so if you have not really doing much about the, the like very accurate synchronization, but we do consider the time threshold, but uh, basically it's not really fancy like very accurate. Okay, thanks. So.